Hey guys, Shane here from Fugadeg 3D Printing. This will be the last vlog I do for a little while because I'm going to be heading out on the road pretty soon. So welcome back guys, and if you don't hear it, my voice is just trashed, my throat is scratchy, I don't know what it is, I've got something, but I have to continue to print things, I haven't recorded anything in several days, but the prints are all done for several film reviews that I'm doing, I'm going to be recording those, if not today, tomorrow, got to get them done and recorded before I depart on Monday, today is Thursday, you might not see this video until Friday, I'll do my best, but we'll see what happens. But anyways, let's talk about what's going on here and uh, get into a couple of things. Very first thing is, is I have decided to learn Fusion 360. It's something that a lot of people tell me is a super powerful tool, it's been great. My old laptop could not handle it for anything, and with SLI on my desktop upstairs, it seems to have some issues with it. I'm going to delete it and re-download it and try again, see if that works out. But on this rig behind me, it works out pretty awesome, and I was able to make this little GoPro rig, which I'm fairly proud about. Um, so what all it is is a straight adapter here on the bottom. I found one on Thingiverse through Customizer, and I'll link it below, and I just shaved it so it's straight on both sides, extended out a side, and put a little cold shoe on the one side, which fits any cold shoe mount. I'm using just my Zoom H1 as a example, but I'm thinking on getting the little tiny Rode microphone. The Rode, not the Rode Go, maybe it's the Rode Go. Anyways, just that little Rode microphone in order to hook onto this, and then I can patch it right into here because I'm getting the little adapter in order to make this work. Which actually is right here. Here's the little adapter that you need in order to go into the GoPro, and then from here it could go directly into the little Rode mic. So again, it's kind of a cool little setup, be kind of nifty for vlogging. Um, don't know if I'll do any of that when I'm home, but I kind of like the option to get some, I mean, the GoPro takes amazing video. I would kind of like the option to get decent audio with it to pair with, especially when I'm gonna be filming my kids, I got a new baby coming up. I don't know if I'll be filming with this or filming with the DSLR or using my little point and shoot camera, which is up there, which I might sell because I'm not happy with it, but another story. But either way, again, this is just super simple thing in, in Fusion 360, I downloaded this model, edited it, downloaded the cold shoe, put a little arm on here, and you know, an hour later for the print, and I have a model. This is the version three I had to do. For some reason, my holes are coming out a little bit ovular because it prints like this. And for some reason, the circles are a little bit ovular when they print on the Monoprice Select Me. I'm gonna print this on the FT5 just to confirm if it's the model or something, but I don't know. But again, this is just something fun. I'm thinking also of making another arm that comes uh, across, up, and then sits on the top as well for the little microphone. Again, kind of just playing with it, trying to learn Fusion 360. Uh, I've been editing files for the Hypercube, and uh, my buddy Kyle, thank you very much. You are like my lifesaver when it comes to Fusion. He has been like my mentor, my coach. If I have any problems, I just ping him. He knocks stuff out in like two minutes, which really irks me, but it takes me like two hours to do what he does in two minutes. So he's helping me re-modify some of the Hypercube, because they're already modified, I'm modifying them again for what I want to do with the Hypercube. I'm going to do the stock part and then show you the modified part when I go to do that build. Anyways, Fusion's been a lot of fun. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, you should. It's free for like hobbyists and things like that. It's a very powerful tool. I think it's a little bit demanding on your resources, but you know, your results may vary. A little bit of mail came in. So I received this from Ziltec Engineering LLC, and this is their pet G that they sent me to test out. What was really cool is that they sent this pet G reviews paperwork to go with it. And it actually has questions here on the bottom, on the bottom page on how it performs, things like that. They want you to fill that out and email it back to them. So I'm going to hopefully do this review before I leave. So this will be a big chunk of my weekend is printing with this, printing most of the roll, printing a whole bunch of models, hopefully getting the recording done for it and getting back to them with this. So I'm real happy that Ziltec uh, asked me to do this. And it's, it's very cool because I bought their PLA. I plan on reviewing it. I purchased that with my own money. I want to do a review on it because a lot of people like it. So that's, you know, more future videos. Hopefully I can get this done before I leave and you guys will get it this summer. We'll see what happens. So Amazon parts, so I got a power plug here. Uh, it's a fuse socket for the, a fuse power plug for the Hypercube. These, I mean, these are stupid cheap on Amazon. They're, I mean, really cheap. Nothing really to worry about, but you wanna make sure you get fused ones. So in case anything was to happen, a surge, a brownout, anything like that, and your printer starts to pull too much, you can go ahead and the fuse will blow and you're safe. It's a really good thing. I also got, so these are M3 by 10 millimeter. These are M3 by 
20 millimeter and then a bunch of little M3 nuts that I will need for a lot of things in there because the stock Hypercube, no this is all for Hypercube, sorry. The stock Hypercube parts do not have the captive nut holes for M3 nuts. So I've downloaded and I've printed several of them that have captive nuts. I'm gonna do with the stock parts first, most of the stock parts. There's a few I really don't like and I changed immediately, but a few of the stock parts I'm going to use, a few of them I'm not, I'll change them later once I kind of put it on, explain why I like it or don't like it, do the other part and go from there. So those are all really essential. Uh, I also got this. So if you all notice what this is, this is the front plate for a E3D Aero. This is not from E3D though. So Triangle Labs hit me up and said, hey, we'd like you to just try this out. I don't think they're expecting a full review, but hey, just give this a shot. Tell us what you think about it. It's milled, I mean, it's aluminum. Uh, it's milled okay. You can see a lot of the traces in it. Usually with good milled stuff, it's nice and flat. Uh, I happen to have, these were the E3D throats that I bought, the all metal throats I brought on AliExpress a long time ago, but they actually don't fit a E3D V6. They fit an E3D V5, I believe it is. Pretty bummed about that, but they fit perfectly into here. Super stoked about that. And they're all metal, so that's great. Uh, it did not come with a fan, it just came with the bearing here for the arm. So I'm thinking about maybe once I get the G-Tech online, putting this on there and be able to gain some of my Z height back, because I lost quite a bit. I think with this extruder with like the E3D V6 clone that's on there, I lost like 20 or almost 30 millimeters off the Z. It's only 200. You lose a lot when you upgrade to that. So I kind of want to maybe put this on there and see how it turns out, because I already have a Titan clone on there, which I believe is a Triangle Labs Titan clone. Put this on there, see what happens, you know, see how it goes. Yeah, so thanks to Triangle Labs for sending this to me. I'll be sure to give it a try. This will not happen until I return in August, though. Sorry, guys. It's a little bit toasty down here without the AC on. I gotta record without it, though. So if you're a gun guy, I found the greatest thing on Thingiverse, and it is a battery magazine for AA batteries. There's a remix for AAA batteries, and there's a remix, I think by the same guy, that makes these shorter, because these are 180 millimeters tall, so if you have something like a Monoprice like Mini, you can't print it. You would have to print the smaller one, which holds eight or 10 batteries. But it's super sweet. I mean, it prints just like this, no supports. Then you have two pieces in here. Uh, so a follower, I forget the technical name for this one, unless this is the follower. But between the two of these, you need a standard 30 magazine AR-15 spring, which I'm gonna order a couple of those and be able to use these. That goes together like that with the spring. And then you have your plate for the bottom. It just requires one screw through the bottom to hold it all together. And that just ensures that the spring doesn't go anywhere as well. And just pushes the batteries up. I mean, this is an ingenious thing that was made and it is absolutely too much fun as a gun guy, as an AR-15 owner. It is just awesome. So I printed these out for my brother and my dad. I just have to mail them because I'm pretty sure Germany would not like a magazine replica in my luggage when I go through there. So we are gonna mail these just so we don't have to worry about that happening. But yeah, again, these are super duper awesome, super cool. Uh, again, when you put the batteries in, they just pop out. I would love to show off how they work, but again, I don't have any of the springs here. It would take me too long to get them. I'll ship them back home. Maybe I'll do a little video back there about them, but I'm not sure yet. But uh, if you want to print these out, uh, the link will be down in the description. Make sure you check out the remixes if you have a small printer, or if you also want to print some AAA ones. Check it out. Uh, as you can see right here, Hypercube is built. I don't know if that was in the last vlog or not, uh, but I took a weekend and built that. I had just enough screws to get the core structure together, and then I ran out. I went on a local economy, tried to buy some more, did not have any. That was very sad face. So I'm upset about that, but it's okay. I knew I wasn't gonna be able to do too much with it while I was here, so it's a project that will sit when I come back. But I have been printing all of the parts, so let me get them. And we have a container here of parts. This is printed in Make Shapers Black Pet G. And I've got all kinds of parts. I don't even know if I'm gonna use them all. Uh, this is for underneath the bed. You mount your MKS MOSFET on here, and it has a cable chain that hooks onto it, and it's still a little bit stiff. I haven't worked all out yet. So as it comes up and comes down, it will just hold on just like that. So that's cool. Uh, I'm gonna do the, the 3.2, the TFT32 touch plate, or touch display. So that's gonna go for here. I've actually been remodeling 
the Z carriage. This actually was an L when I first got it, and then Kyle helped me make it into a T, and then I went ahead and modified, made the cross straps here a little bit thicker. I made them, these are stock 12 millimeter. I made them 20 millimeter just to hold that bearing a little bit more. I don't think it needs it. He didn't think so either, but I figured why not? It makes it a little more sturdy, gives people options. Some people want options. And then I put captive nuts here in the back so that you don't have to try to use pliers. Uh, you can just screw them down real quick. I have several remixes for the Y steel rods to hold those in because the ones from Tech2C are really, really gimpy and you have to pinch them and there's like, I think they're literally like two millimeter thick. I don't think those are thick enough. I want something nice, strong, sturdy. It's not gonna move. Pretty heavy ones of those. Uh, I printed several different ones of the XY idler carriage. So this sits on the printer like so. Your X rods go in here. And the idlers here are for 20 tooth or 16 tooth. I forget which one these are, I'll have to look it up. Uh, they also have captive nuts in them. So a lot of the things that I've looked at, I really liked from Tech2C. But then looking at the remixes, I'm like, wow, these are really smart, like these are cool. So I do have mixes in here and some stock parts. So we'll go with, you know, when I go to build it, I'll explain each one of those. And, but again, I'm printing a lot of these. This is almost one full roll of filament. I had, I'd say three failed prints and I actually printed these with full build plates, pretty full build plates on the FT5 to get as many done as I could. And a lot of the prints were between 10 and 16 hours, roughly, to get them all done. So it, I mean, it worked out well. Some of the parts didn't come out as good, like uh, some of these uh, links aren't absolutely perfect. I'm not terribly worried about it right now. I can always replace them later, but they work uh, if I even use this. Again, don't even know, this is not part of the stock build but I don't even know if I'm gonna use it. So it'd be worthwhile to test it out. And if I like it, then I'll reprint. So a Facebook buddy of mine, Ken Jones, went ahead and took my enclosure for the FT5 and took it to the next level. Because I stated in my video, I would really like to have a way to just magnetize those panels to the enclosure. That way it makes it easy to take them on and off. I'm actually going inside the T-slot, so they're wedged in there. So you actually have to take parts off corner brackets or upper T-slot extrusion in order to pull out the actual, you know, panes, the side panels, we'll call them. So he went ahead and made a video. So I'm gonna link it and I'll put a little thing here. You guys see a little bit of it, hopefully, if, unless I do it wrong. But he did an excellent job and he made it so that there's hinges and he's using rare earth magnets that go inside one side and they go inside the other. They snap to the aluminum extrusion and they close down right on the side. And how he's doing it is he's going on the face of everything. So outside of the corner brackets and everything. And then in the parts that there's gaps, he's using weather stripping. Uh, the kind of stuff you'd put around like your window or your screen door or something like that. Cut that to size, put it in there, and then when that closes in, that closes it up nice and tight. You have to add a little bit more of the magnets in there, here and there, but it closes up really, really well. So I really want you guys to go check out his video if you're looking to enclose the FT5. If you're looking to print parts for it, use magnets for it. It's an excellent setup. He's using, I think, uh, the uh, corrugated plastic for that. I'm using foam board. You could use plexiglass, foam board, the plastics he's using, acrylic, anything you'd want. You can do all in clear, too, as you can see through all of it. His is in black, same as mine. But there's a lot of options out there. So I want you guys to go check out his video, please, because he did a lot of work in that, and I really like the way he explains everything. As I said, when we started this video, this is the last vlog I do. I don't know if I'm going to do them while I'm home, but this is the last one that I'm doing before I travel. I leave, today's Thursday, again, I hope you get this video on Thursday or Friday. I leave on Monday to head back to the States. Baby's due July 5th, power blip. Baby's due July 5th. So that is the current date, that's what we're planning on. Hopefully everything goes well and you know, wife is healthy, baby stays healthy and we can stick to that date. So we can celebrate 4th of July and then go ahead and have a baby, yay! Still don't know what it is if people are asking. We don't know if it's boy or girl. Find out when it comes out. We still need a boy name. So we still gotta figure that one out still. Anyways, again, I don't know if I'm gonna do vlogs when I'm back home. We'll see what happens if this is the last one until I come back, so be it. But I definitely will do uh, an update on the next thing. The next thing is, is apparently a buddy of mine on Facebook, we never met, don't, I mean, never met the guy before two, three months ago, uh, Rayleigh. Uh, he's a Patreon of mine. Uh, he's a big supporter of my channel. Love the guy. He's an awesome guy. He decided to put together a GoFundMe for a printer for me while I'm back in the States so I can continue to print and make advances and, and work on my 3D printing while I'm in the States. And his GoFundMe was funded in two days. It was for $220. It was funded by, I believe, eight people. 
And when I do the video on that, there will be a separate slide just to thank those eight folks for doing that. And there was actually a few others, there was about 10 or 12 in total that fully funded it. So I thank all of you guys. Uh, to be honest, when I saw it funded, a little tear came to my eye that you guys actually like me enough to buy a printer so that I can just use while I'm on paternity leave. It's a pretty sick idea. Uh, super excited about it, and I thank you guys so much for that. But they got me a Folger Tech 2020 i3, which I don't have, and I've wanted that printer for a long time. There are a million mods for it. I plan on doing every mod I can to it. You can extend the Z, put in some threaded or some lead screws. You can extend the bed. You can extend the Z height because it's all 2020, so it's super easy to expand that printer with like no effort whatsoever. It's great stuff, and I have lots of 2020 sitting over here, left over from the Hypercube. So again, Relay and every one of you guys that donated to that GoFundMe, thank you so much. You have no idea how much that means to me. If I could hug each and every one of you, I would do so. I mean that. All right, well, I'm hot because I don't have the AC on down here and it's getting into the hundreds, so it is just brutal. But I want to finish this up. Thank you again to all of you for watching. Thank you everyone that supports me. It means the world that you guys want to help support me continue this little fun escapade of mine on YouTube. I appreciate it. So if you guys liked the video, give it a like. Didn't dislike, talk to me down below. If you want to support the channel, subscribe down below. Almost at 2,500. Big deal, guys. 2,500 is right around the corner if I didn't hit it while I'm recording this. So I'm super excited about that. Thank you, everyone that subscribes and comebacks to watch. If you want to support me with some of your money, Patreon link down below. Donate me a dollar more. Greatly appreciate it. My current Patreon links, you already know you guys are awesome. If you want to support me without spending your money, some affiliate links down in the description. Go ahead and use some of those. MakerBox, Amazon, things like that. A little bit of slice of that comes back to help me out. I appreciate anything and everything that you guys do for me. And as always, happy printing.